the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things He's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. Hmm. I ain't faith to call you to do something. I'm talking about faith that causes God to do something. Right. Because the purpose of faith is to get God to do something. It ain't to get you to do something. It's uh -huh. to get God to do something first. Right. Uh, if that, if what God does first, then calls you to do something, that's all really good. Right. But faith always intended to get God to initiate something. Right. Right. Due to even, even, even in the fact that, you remember, God would go before them, but they didn't have that understanding that, you know, to go into the promised land, I'm saying it. They they didn't they didn't understand that he was gonna go before them. He technically he already been before them because we know that we know when they went into Jericho, they already knew that these were God people coming. And they were already afraid. Well, they, they, they knew something that God people didn't even know. Yeah, yeah, oh Lord help me. <laughs> help me. <laughs> help me. <laughs> So that's what I'm saying. See, see, that's why when we start looking at scripture, woo, that's why we really need to take the time to really dig into this thing and really get on down in it, so that we can look at what has happened in the past. Yes. Now, because listen now, if how you if what you see in scripture is perverted. Yeah, it's going to cause you to not be able to hear clearly what God is saying. It's going to twist what God is saying to you. Yeah. Yeah. It... And you, I, need to, I don't know if you understand how serious that is. If when you look at scripture uh -huh. and the picture you see of God there is jacked up, that means that what you will be hearing from God will also be jacked up. Jacked up. Cause you're not, you're not. Jacked. You got a, you got a jacked up perception of who God is. Right, right. So we, 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 we gotta, we gotta get a good view of Him there. So that now when He begins to speak and begin to move, we can clearly correlate and say, okay, that, that's God. That's God. That's God. That we start correlating His attributes. You know, because even though I guess with the fruits of the spirit, love, joy, I mean, those attributes need to imply. Because behind these scriptures, it is the same God who changes not, but he was revealing himself to men in scripture. Yes, yes. So we get the testimony of other men of who God is. Right, right. That's the first thing you knew. But listen now. Uh, but Archibald, read, Archibald like that said, that won't help you none. Archibald said that the testimony of other men won't really benefit you none. Hmm. You, you got to look, you, you got to somehow get in there with God until, until it becomes your testimony. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> I mean, you can build a, right, it becomes real to you, right? <laughs> And we ain't like the son of Sebu, the, the, the God that Paul freed. Right. No. <laughs> no. no. He might he might save you. He might save you. Or, 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 just, or just like Joshua. He is the God that Paul, he the God that Paul preached and preached, preached, but he's also my savior. Exactly. Right. Well, right, right. Because even in numbers, it was a Joshua or Caleb, one of them that said, you know, they're bred to us. That becomes real to them. That it was real to them. So let's go up at once. Uh, 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 <laughs> Archibald Alexander said, "When you get the testimony of, of, of other men about God, that's an external reality." Oh Lord! Oh come on, come on. He, said, he said, "But until that thing becomes an internal witness, really you, really you, it's, it's an scripture it can be either external reality, but it ought to lead you to an internal witness." Whoa, 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 whoa! Wait a minute. There you go. Because, I, and I'm serious, I, I just want to ride with that. I'm saying this, when Joshua and them said, they are bred to us, let us go at once. And like you said, it was real to them, but to the rest of the people, that wasn't real. It was in what they said. Woo! But, but, but there were two men saying it. They had 10 other men saying something else. 
And when you're on a natural plane, the majority <laughs> rule. <laughs> and it was foul, Lord. And that's similar to today, right? It has to become real to you. And, and ten, 10 people, it was not real. And, and on, the, on the external plane, an unsaved man, an unsaved man's mind, if you got 10 men saying one thing and two men saying another, on a natural plane, you was. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. What? Hey, but them saying this. But them other 10 over there saying something else. Woo! Naturally, it's just something about us. Naturally, we say, well, them Woo! all can't be wrong. Woo! Woo! Right. And that's why Jesus said, the road that leads to the kingdom is narrow. Wow. I go broad where you got you got you got a crowd. You got yes, the majority. Sir. Yes, sir. And if you left on the natural plane, that's how you gonna reason. Wow. So you go to church and you get on the usher board and you oh, get yeah. you get all the programs, you think that's God. Woo! Mm. That means you can't hear. <laughs> Yeah, in other words, hey, look, then we get into Tesselying. You think that's all you need? No, what, what's all this holiness and all this <laughs> acting and all this, all this praying and, you know? <laughs> Woo! We don't need, we don't need all that. All we need is the blood of Jesus. I'm like, okay. Woo! Whoa, you, you're talking now. You, you're saying something. Let me tell you what. <laughs> That's what Jude described him in. He got a long list of things. Just look here. These are the spots. These are waterless clouds. These are trees with withered fruit. Fruitless trees, twice dead, plucked up by the root. Raging waves, murmurers, complainers, wandering stars. Those that separate themselves, sensual. You know, sensual people are, you know, we as, we as black people have to be careful that because we're very emotional people. Emotional people, yeah. yeah. But, 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 but what we ought not do is to throw the baby out with the bathwater. Don't, 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 don't think that because we are sensual people that the Spirit of God does not also cause sensual reactions in us, responses in us. Yeah, 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 yeah. When the Spirit of God grabs hold to your emotion, that's different from Michael Jackson grabbing hold to your emotion. Come on. When the Spirit of God grabs hold of your emotion, that's different from Marvin Gaye grabbing hold of your emotion. Come on now. Come on. Come I on. remember when I was going to say, Marvin Gaye used to tell the tell concert. I'm like, <laughs> Marvin Gaye going to the Tampa concert. <laughs> but that was on a natural sensual plane. Right. But we don't realize is that the Spirit of God can come in and take hold of your same emotional capacity and tear up some stuff. Come on. But but the, and the key to it is being being what? Like you said though, is it, it's almost just like you're talking about with the scriptures. The scriptures gotta become real to you. It, it it has to be real to you. And some of us are witnessing what is real to what God is revealing to somebody. But well, we're not we're not uh we're not translating that that also has to happen to you personally. But what I'm saying is, is that when other men in scripture testify about who God is, mm. that's an external witness of who God is. External. Until Christ becomes an internal witness in your own heart. Yes, sir. See, it's Christ that, it was Christ that was revealing himself to these men. Right. He uses what, he uses the record of how he reveals himself to those men as a means of revealing himself to you. Yes. But in the end, what you all got to have is just the scripture. You ought to have Christ. Yeah. Himself. Come on, revealing to you. Yes. Right. Not speaking, moving, living in you. Right. Now it becomes, and then you now he's an internal witness. Wow. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In other words. The other, just like the scriptures, somebody else is just another means for you to understand, but it's still to say you got to get to that. You got to get there. It got to be real to you. That's just like those scriptures, right? Those scriptures got to be real to you. That's how God builds the kingdom. Wow. Builds himself to some men. These men receive that testimony. Yes. 
and he became an internal witness in them. Yes. They start writing. Come on. We read their Come witness. On. Come on. He reveals itself to us. Yes. But we ain't got to write nothing no more. All right, we got to do is open my mouth and point back to that which is written. Come on now. Come on. Now he did. Oh. Hey, look, he did so something. We ain't just got scripture. We got him. <laughs> we got him. Right, right, right. Because you remember saying, because we're living epistles. Yes. Right? <laughs> like you said. We got him. Yes. Yeah. They didn't have him. So, so. When I thought looking at that thing in Jude, I thought, man, Jude is really kind of just. Um, Jude is really in harmony with uh, all the older writings of Scripture. Hmm. With that down toward the end. And even at one of our elected 20, you're talking about they building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Keep yourself in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ and eternal life. And of some have compassion, making a difference. In others, saved with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. A call to preserve. But beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lusts. These be they who separate themselves sensual, having not, wait a minute, having not the Spirit, having not the Holy Spirit? Having not the Holy Spirit. Having not the Holy Spirit. Having not the Holy Spirit. Marvel not, you must be born again. Let me tell you something. Paul, I don't know if you know who Paul Washington is. Huh? Paul Washington is a British evangelist, pastor. And uh, some years ago, they invited Paul Washington to Moody Bible Institute. This is some years ago, back in, I have to go back and look at it. But I think you can find it on YouTube. And they, invited, they invited Paul Washington back to the Moody Institute of Profoundest Day. Right. And Paul Walker was invited to speak to the youth. And uh, Paul Walker basically told them, knowing that if he talked, no, not this Paul Walker, knowing that if he preached it, he didn't know he would never get invited back, and he never got invited back. He did, okay, okay. But he told them, basically, that they need to check and see if they were false converts. You call it, what'd you call them, false converts? False converts. Because we was taught, you know, remember like, like you're talking about people getting baptized very young. I, I think Brother Bell said that one time. He, you know, he got baptized very young. And the question was, did we, did we start taking a method of salvation opposed to born again? Because he remembers that Jesus said, Mama and I, you must be born again, right? To be born again is to have the Holy Spirit. Well, but not only that, see what Jews are really, what, what Jews are really focusing on, you know, he, he, he seems not to make any distinction between having the Holy Spirit but not being transformed. Oh, the, huh? You talking about a Jew? Yeah. You see, the, em the emphasis is is that you've been sanctified. Okay. 
set apart unto God in Christ and preserved. Okay. For what? To do his will, ain't it? Well, I'm just saying. To not ask that question is to is to is to really miss the whole purpose. Okay. You've been sanctified in Christ, set apart unto God in Christ, and you've been preserved in that in, in, in that state for the sole purpose of conforming you to the image of Christ. Okay, now I'm tracking, right? Because because we're talking here, right, like 21, keeping yourself in the love of God looking for the mercy of our lord now, when, he said, when he said keep yourself in the love of god okay so what does that mean and, and you know that that's you know god is love there's the, the fact is that he gave his son so he could save the whole world so he his love is showing that sacrifice of dying itself in order to 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 move forward i mean I, that's what i'm thinking about is that he demonstrated his love by giving his son. Okay, now, okay, now, now I want you to think about that now. Because what I find in our ideas is that we read these phrases, but we don't really think about what these phrases are, say, are really saying to us. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Now, in order for God to demonstrate his love, right, right, he had to give his son. Right, right, a sacrifice. Uh -huh. Yeah. Hello. But what if the son doesn't obey? Now that would, but right, which is I would say Adam opposed to Jesus, but the son okay. did obey. So, so the obedience of Christ, okay, uh huh, to the purpose for which God sends him, okay, now becomes the expression of that love. Mm. But the obedience of the son in coming. Also, is this is the expression of his love for God? In other words, the, I think the only way that we can really obey God okay. is to obey Him. Okay. Like all of them have demonstrated it. Moses demonstrated it. Jesus said, "If a man love me, he keep my." He didn't say, he didn't say, he didn't say out of all the things he could have said, he said, "If a man love me." Uh-huh. Basically he said he will obey what I tell him. Yes, yes, yes. Jesus said, the father loveth the son because I do always because I obey him. Woo! A relationship. A relationship. Look, it, it, yeah, yeah. Obeying him too, and that's the critical piece too, isn't it? Obeying him. Because it becomes real to you when you're obeying him, when you're submitting to him. But we submit, we're at least taught sometimes <laughs> in the past, learn to submit to other things, to institutions, to to other people. So, so in the obedience of God, we get the clearest view of the love of God. Yes. So that we now, can be used to now be instruments of love toward other people. And that's what you begin to move to now. He starts to look, you got some folks in there who ain't like these folks. They just don't know no better. This right. some folks, it's, it's, it's that on some have compassion. Right. Making a difference. Okay. You know, some of them are like me. Mm -hmm. See, it take, it, it take me almost 40 years to get to this point. Yes, sir. Now, see, some folks got, got impatient. They just threw me out. So that, that, that nigga ain't gonna never get it. We're tired of messing with him. We're tired of going. He ain't gonna get it. That's, that's, <laughs> they'll let him go. But no, on some, you you, you, you gotta be patient and let God do what he's gonna do. Right. So right. he said, some have, on some, have compassion making a difference. And on the other, be terrified. Be fearful. And you gotta pull them. Pulling them from the fire. You don't realize, you're, you're on dangerous ground when you're doing that. Okay. So he said, there are some you got to be fearful. And, and others saved with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. That's a whole other story because what that talks about now is you got folks who are in the church who got the spirit of God, but are given to certain things that renders them defiled and unclean. 
Yeah. Yeah.